Okay, so as you know, our schedule is very packed, so I would like to start the next session. So welcome back, and I would like to invite all of us here, my beloved participants, to take the time machine and travel to the future together, because the next session is going to be the future of colorectal surgery training in the ASEAN region. Our moderator is the head of general and colorectal surgery from the University of Malaya and senior vice president for the College of Surgeons, Academy of Medicine of Malaysia. Please welcome. Professor Dr. April Camilla Roslani. Thank you very much and uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, I trust you all slept well after last night's wonderful gala dinner. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker uh, for this morning, who is Professor Armando Crisostomo. Uh, Professor Armando is probably no stranger to us in ASEAN. He's certainly no stranger to Malaysians. Uh, he is very, very well known uh, for his leadership role, uh, having been a past president of the Philippine Society of Colorectal Surgeons, as well as the Philippine College of Surgeons, and the ASEAN Society of Colorectal Surgeons. Um, he also has uh, a, a master's in education. Um, so I think there's no better person to speak to us today about the future of colorectal surgery training in the ASEAN region. Please join me in welcoming Professor Armando. Good morning. It's certainly a pleasure on my part to be among the podium speakers in this uh, symposium and be among friends to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the colorectal unit, which we saw grow along the years. So I have no disclosures for this talk. And as it's, they say, it's always useful to look back to the past to see how far we've come. And I'd like to show this picture. This was the foundation of the uh, Philippine Society of Colon and Rectal Surgeons, which was founded as early as 1969. So we're celebrating 50 years. And among the pioneers, uh, how do I, is, is this guy, Dr. Porfirio Recio. He was the first Southeast Asian trained colorectal surgeon. He trained in, under Harry Bacon at Temple University in the United States. And together with two other surgeons, Dr. Romeo Gutierrez, Dr. Carlos Magsano, who trained in Temple University, Dr. Felix Tambatko, who trained in Pittsburgh, Dr. Ampil and Dr. Pagtalunan, they formed the first Society of Colorectal Surgeons in the Southeast Asian region. And typically, the pioneering colorectal surgeons in our region were, for the Philippines, most of them got their training in the United States, while those in Singapore, Malaysia, uh, got trained in, in the, the United Kingdom. The first colorectal training program actually started in the Philippine General Hospital at the University of the Philippines in the early 1980s. It was just a one-year program then. And Dr. Alberto Rojas, who was going to eventually become dean of the UP College of Medicine, was the first trainee under this program. We initially had slow progressive development of colorectal practice and training in this region and even in my country. But I think the formation of the ASEAN Society of Colorectal Surgeons in the early uh, 2000, or the early part of this decade, um, really spurred on the growth of the specialty of colon and rectal surgeons, as you can see by the numerous and, you know, diversified areas in which we were able to hold the ASEAN Society of Colorectal Surgeons Conference, which brought together, really, the leaders and um, spurred on the growth of the specialty in this region. And, we acknowledge the fact that even in Myanmar, where there is no, you know, there was not a society yet then, was able to host the ASEAN Society of Colorectal Surgeons meeting just uh, in February of 2018. But let's look at the present. And I did an informal <laughs> survey of how colorectal training was being done in the four major countries where there are uh, colorectal training programs uh, existent. The Philippines uh, has eight programs, 
And we have a two-year training, structured training program in colon and rectal surgery. It is after general surgery. In Thailand, with the help of Chu Chi, uh, he, I got the information that there are three uh, colorectal programs, very similar to the Philippines. It's a two-year training program. Malaysia, this is an interesting model. They have a one, you know, a, a national program, you know, and with five participating hospitals. And the trainee uh, has to undergo a total duration of three years training, preferably one year abroad in a different country, and they require their trainees to spend uh, their training in two of the participating five hospitals, okay? Singapore is, is actually a strange story. Uh, I, I, I've had difficulty getting data from Singapore, and now I can explain to you why. Because uh, it's difficult to determine how many trading programs there are. The three most prominent, that's why I put there three plus plus plus. The three most prominent programs are the ones most well known are the ones in Singapore General Hospital, the National University Hospital, and Tan Tok Seng. Uh, but there are a number of uh, training programs existent. But the problem is uh, the, the, the information given to me both by Charles and Francis is that colorectal, uh, while Singapore is the home to many of our region's most prominent, most highly regarded, and very well trained uh, colon and rectal surgeons, it is not officially recognized as a specialty in Singapore. It, most of them within their own country, the, the very well-regarded colorectal surgeons, are registered as general surgeons in, in Singapore with an interest in colon and rectal surgery. While they remain, actually they actually are very more famous outside as colorectal surgeons, okay? So that is the real situation in, this, in, in Singapore. So all of us require that our trainees first finish general surgery. And uh, two out of the four countries, the Philippines and Thailand, we do require a certain minimum number of uh, operative cases that they be able to do as part of a requirement of their training. While Malaysia and Singapore are more outcome based meaning to say it doesn't matter how many you do as long as they find you're able to you know, show the outcome and the competence of performing a certain procedure even after just a minimum number of cases, they will, you can move forward in the training. Research requirement is, is something required <coughs> of nearly all training programs. In Singapore, it's not mandatorily required. It is said to be advantageous, and yet they're, they're very productive in terms of their research output. Again, board certification. There are certifying boards in colorectal surgery in the Philippines, in Thailand, in Malaysia, but there is still one to be established in, in Singapore. So again, looking back, uh, confidence in our past gives us the courage to look forward to the future. And what do we see in the future? I, I put together in the future uh, a combination of things that we would like to see, and at the same time, things that are likely to happen because literally the handwriting is on the wall. One is we'd like to see and we predict the development of the colorectal specialty and subsequently colorectal training in at least three other countries in this ASEAN region, namely in Vietnam, in Indonesia, and in Myanmar. I predict that under the leadership of Professor Mo Mo Tin, who is part of the audience here, we will seen, soon see uh, colorectal training and the growth of that specialty in Myanmar. In Vietnam and Indonesia, the, the, the colorectal is under what we call gastrointestinal surgery. 
the very strong gastrointestinal group in these two countries sort of, you know, kind of resists uh, the development of colon rectum. But um, we feel that the us, the uh, ASCS and the neighboring country societies should be playing a key role. I think the Philippine society should play a key role in trying to, you know, convince our Indonesian neighbors and maybe the Thai group could, you know, help along the, our Vietnamese colleagues so that they could spur on the development of colorectal surgery as a distinct specialty with a distinct uh, specialty organization uh, arising in Vietnam and Indonesia. We're hopefully going to see the effect of the ASEAN integration and what we call the Mutual Recognition Agreement. This agreement which includes the medical and the surgical professions, is expected to uh, spur on the greater mobility of medical and special practitioners among the ASEAN countries. And as we move towards this, uh, I, I predict that we will soon see the development of an outcome-based core, core curriculum in colorectal surgery training that we in the different ASEAN countries would likely adopt. This will soon be followed by a system of training accreditation because we would like to see a lot of, you know, uh, more quality in the kind of training that we uh, undertake. And therefore, accreditation appears to be a very key um, instrument so that uh, levels of training and uh, quality can be adopted and increased. And because of this, we will likely see an increased sharing of training resources. We are already doing that on an informal basis, but it's likely that this sharing of resources, including faculty, personnel, residents, rotating from one from the, in the different ASEAN countries will likely be implemented on a more formalized basis. So we're going to see rotations of trainings among the ASEAN colorectal pro trainees among the ASEAN colorectal programs and likely visiting professorships as uh, faculty and trainers on the different regarded, highly regarded training programs can be rotated in the, or will likely spend um, short visiting professorships in, in other countries. The future, definitely, and you've, we've seen this in most of our the content of our meeting, the increased use of technology. Definitely, we can no longer turn back the hands of time in terms of really maximally using minimally invasive techniques. And therefore, we also have to catch up in how we train our colorectal fellows and residents. We would have to uh, see more advances in use of simulation technology for training as the uh, minimally invasive techniques and other procedures become uh, way too complex at times. And we need to be able to shorten the learning curve and simulations are going to be play a very, very important part in this. Similarly, we're going, to have to, we're going to see the increased use of distance education modalities in which you know, faculty from one country can uh, broadcast, you know, lectures, teaching materials, and we can share all of this among the different ASEAN countries as well. It's not even difficult to imagine that in the future, maybe Francis from way in Singapore may even do an operation uh, in the Philippines, controlled, you know, uh, remotely from, from Singapore. That, that day is not too far off, okay? But what this now, the increased number of procedures, the more complex, the large number, will 
see an increased number in the variety of colorectal procedures and techniques that our trainees have to be able to master. So what will be the consequences of this? How do we resolve this? Our trainee has to learn so many things. He has to be able to do colonoscopy, endorectal ultrasound, perform minimally invasive, maximally invasive. There's so many things. The content explosion in the field of colorectal surgery that our trainee now has to learn has increased so tremendously. And we must respond to this. So I, I cannot say yet how we are going to respond to this, but there are several alternatives. One could be uh, to possibly shorten the general surgery requirement. You know, uh, in the Philippines, we have a five years general surgery program, which some people have said may be a little too long. And in some specialties, like thoracic cardiovascular, plastic, they've responded similarly. They've shortened the general surgery requirement for the residents entering, entering their programs. I don't know whether that will be, whether you would like to accept, you know, residents who are less uh, adept at performing general surgical procedures. This has been discussed, you know, in fact, uh, there have been suggestions on some, from some surgeons in my country to adopt a straight colorectal program without passing through general surgery. Of course, my initial reaction to that was over my dead body. You know? um, I don't know how that uh, suits uh, the other uh, colorectal surgeons, but I think a, a broad and uh, well rounded general surgery remains a, a good, you know, sound um, foundation for anyone who wants to train in colon and rectal surgery. The second alternative is should we lengthen the duration of training? It has become three years already in Malaysia. It's two years in most of the other countries. Um, do we need to extend so that uh, our residents can really become competent in all of these procedures and, and things that they have to master. The next is maybe customized training. Make uh, our residents decide what sp specific field in colorectal surgery they would like to, to undertake. And this now leads us to the next bullet, which is, um, I think we're seeing this already in some uh, colorectal programs, the development of sub <coughs> specialization in colorectal surgery. Like in, in, in uh, the Chula program, we see uh, some of their consultants like Supakage, you know, specializing more in endo endo endoscopic procedures, while the, the other surgeons would be uh, specializing in the minimally invasive procedures. And there could be somebody doing both the combined endolap uh, techniques to ensure there's greater proficiency in the different aspects and areas of colorectal surgery. So that, that's going to be part of, I think, what will happen in our specialty. We're going to see, I think, sub-specialization. Um, in the Philippines, we do have one of our trainees now uh, learning maximally invasive surgery in, in Australia. Okay. And when she comes back, we, we do hope that she will concentrate on that particular. And we also have one of our consultants in our division who specializes in the anorectal physiology uh, aspect of colorectal. Okay, so those, there are really so many things that our trainees now have to master, unlike before. Okay, so these are the alternatives we are likely going to see. Maybe shortening general surgery, lengthen or lengthening the duration of training, or customizing our training to suit the individual needs of our trainers. Lastly, I think in the future, as we see, there are two programs there that still concentrate, and we still make a uh, big fuss about numbers. You should do so many colonoscopies, anal rectal procedures, and the like. 
I think we sh are seeing the trend towards focusing more on quality rather than quantity. And in this era of outcome-based education, we should be more concerned with following our residents and ensuring that they um, achieve the ne necessary outcomes and competencies rather than just counting the number of cases. And hopefully, uh, the different programs will weed themselves out and we'll be able to identify centers of excellence within the ASEAN region. And this likely will lead to a lot more collaborative multi-center research trials among the identified centers of excellence in the ASEAN programs. And this will really lead, make, uh, put the ASEAN training programs in the map as you're able to do a lot more collaborative research together. So in summary um, of the future, yeah, I see further growth and development of the colorectal specialty. It will be spurred on by the ASEAN Society of Colorectal Surgeons, the developments in the ASEAN multi, um, MRA or mutual um, agreements, and desire for excellence by the regional leaders, the identified regional leaders in the ASEAN. Cooperation and collaboration among the ASEAN countries will be key. And eventually, Southeast Asia will be a key world player in clinical outcome, training, and research. And indeed, the future looks very bright. So in closing, I'd like to invite everyone to join April as she hosts the 17th Congress of the Asia Pacific Federation of Color Proctology this coming March. And uh, the first Society of Colorectal Surgeons, the Philippine Society, will be turning 50 a month later. And we are going to organize a, a special meeting for all of you as well. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone again for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Professor Armando, for that uh, thoughtful and illuminating oration. Um, th as this is a keynote lecture, we will not be inviting questions, but I would ask you to uh, join me in thanking him again in our customary manner. With that, I would like to close this session and hand over to the...